Hello everyone and welcome to another RenPy tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to start the beginning of a new series on intermediate RenPy. So I'm going to assume at this point that you've gone through most or all of the uh, a complete beginner's guide to RenPy. I will link to that playlist above. Be sure that you've gone through that one before you start this one, um, as we're getting into some slightly more advanced topics with this one. Um, also, it will be really helpful if you have some Python knowledge, but I've got you covered there as well. Be sure to check out my uh, beginning Python series or Python game making for beginners. I will also post a link to that playlist above. And again, a full knowledge of that isn't 100% necessary, but it will really, really help you understand a lot of the concepts that we're going to get into. So before we get started, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit my notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with Intermediate Python. So in today's videos, we're going to talk about statement equivalents, which are statements that are uh, that we use in RenPy and their equivalent statements in the Python language. So before we get into that, I want to have a uh, I want to tell you quickly about the difference between high level and low level programming languages, um, and that'll kind of uh, help explain a little bit about what we're going to get into today. So you might think that a high level language is more difficult than a low level language, but the opposite is actually true. Low level language languages are generally more difficult to learn and comprehend, higher level languages are a little bit easier. Let me explain. So at the bottom level, we have what is called machine language or binary code, which all that is is a string of ones and zeros. This is considered non-human readable because it takes far too much to be able to take that and translate it into something that we can understand. However, all computer code at its most basic level is just a series of ones and zeros. So above that, we have the first low level languages that are human readable, things like assembly language um, or assembly code. So assembly is very, very difficult to learn and very difficult to read, but it gives you a tremendous amount of control over every little tiny thing that happens in your code. Um, a step above that are languages such as the computer language C, which was one of the first very, very widely used general use programming languages. Um, also around this same level, but maybe a little bit higher level, we have languages such as C++, which also give you very, very low level control over things like memory management, like you can decide exactly when things are loaded into and removed from memory. Again, very difficult language to learn, but it gives you tremendous amounts of control. If we go up a couple of levels, we start getting into what are called scripting languages. And these include things such as Python, um, as well as JavaScript, Perl, and some other languages. So these are very, very easy to read, very easy to learn, but don't give you quite as much control uh, as the lower level languages such as C, and C++ give you. And generally speaking, that's okay because most of the stuff that you know us mere mortals uh, do, we don't really need that much control. So our programming languages um, that we use, such as Python, um, uh, our most important uh, aspects of these languages are to make them readable, easy to learn, easy to code with, and fast to code with. Um, now, even though they're a lot faster to code, they're slower to run. The closer you get to machine languages, language, the more control you have, the more difficult it is to learn, and the faster your code can run because it is closer to machine language. It has to go through fewer steps in order to compile and run in binary, that string of ones and zeros. So RenPy is a further level of abstraction on top of Python. So it's almost like a programming language in itself that is higher level than Python is. Um, as we've seen before, however, you can use different functions in Python. Um, and I will give you a quick refresher on that. So I've got my very basic, uh, my very basic uh, script file uh, created. This is the same one that I used in my animated backgrounds and animated sprites tutorial that I did last week. But you know that if you want to use a quick little bit of Python code, you can just put in a dollar sign and then, um, and I'll just say, I didn't declare this variable, but let's pretend that I did uh, create a variable called Chelsea happiness. And I can say Chelsea happiness plus equals one. So I can just add one to her happiness level. And this is Python code. I tell it that it's Python code because I put that dollar sign there, which lets RenPy know, hey, this is Python code. This is not something that RenPy can read. So you've got to use Python here. You can also do an entire block of Python code. If 
by just typing in Python and then you can put in a whole block of Python code whatever you want to do and then when you go you know back in indention level um, then it will let you know you're breaking out of Python and going back to RenPy. All right. So the topic that I want to get into the, into today is statement equivalence. That is things that RenPy understands that Python doesn't necessarily understand, but how to make Python understand those things. Um, let me explain that a little bit better. So we have different RenPy functions, such as scene or show. Whenever you do scene, that lets RenPy know that you are putting in a background scene. Every time you do show, that means that you're telling RenPy that you're going to show a graphic or show a character sprite on the screen. Again, this is not Python code. It is Python-like. Uh, in, its, uh, in its syntax, but this is stuff that is purely RenPy that Python does not understand. However, we can make Python understand these things. So if you do a block of Python code and you want to use these RenPy functions, there are ways of doing that. So I'll show you real quick. Let me go ahead and run this scene just so you can see what we should expect. All right, I'm gonna go to start. So we've got our background our Chelsea character with the blinking animation after five seconds. There she goes, and she says nothing. All right, and that is the end of that. So if I wanted to um, run this as a Python block, I'll say Python colon, I'm going to indent this so it's all included in that Python block. Now if I run this, let's see what happens. I get a big error because it's trying to run this as Python code. Python does not understand the keywords scene or show or even the keyword Chelsea that we use down here. So we have to let it know how to read these things by using the RenPy API, the application programming interface. So the API is basically the level of code on top of Python that RenPy creates. And I'll show you how to do that and it is actually relatively simple. All right, so the first thing that we need to do in order to get this to work with Python is, I'm actually going to comment out these, but the first thing we have to, the next thing we have to do is we have to tell uh, Python or tell RenPy in Python um, that we're going to start a new scene. So now we're going to use a, what's called a dot operator. We're gonna say RenPy dot scene. And that's basically going to just let them know that we're starting a new scene. Then we're going to start showing our graphics with a series of show statements. So we're going to say renpy dot show, and then we're going to pass in a parameter. It's going to expect an argument that is the name of your image. And on this one, we can use the images that we've already defined over here uh, that we defined in our last video. So I can go renpy dot show, and let's do bg lights and then renpy.show and let's do chelsea neutral and when you pass those in you have to pass them as strings so we have to put them in uh, quotation marks or this will not work then in order to get her to say whatever she's going to say again we have to use another dot statement we're going to say renpy.say and then in parentheses we're going to put the name of our character as a string chelsea and then we're going to put whatever she says and I'm just gonna make her say hello there we go so now let's run this and we should get basically identical behavior to what we got before uh, with the exception of this extra uh, statement that we're going to put in there All right, let's try that and there we go everything works as expected but now we're basically using pure Python in order to make all of these things happen so there are many, many statement equivalents. Basically, everything that you can do in, um, in RenPy has a Python statement equivalent that you can use in Python code. So you might be asking yourselves at this point, why would I ever have to do this when it's so much easier to just do it without breaking out into a Python statement? And that is a very good question. I mean, RenPy exists because it makes uh, creating a visual novel easier. It abstracts this lower level stuff to a high level, a higher level, um, higher level kind of programming language to make these things easier to do. However, by using these lower level, uh, these lower level functions, um, 
in actual Python statements, you get a lot more control. Again, I said before that the purpose of using lower level languages is to get more control. So by doing this, like all of these things, like the name of the character and all of this stuff, like all of this stuff happens basically behind the scenes. Um, whenever you're doing this in RenPy, a lot of this stuff you don't have to explicitly state or you don't have to use this complicated syntax, such as using the parentheses. You don't have to always use quotations, only for certain things. However, by doing this, you get a lot more control. You can create functions. In the next couple of videos, we're going to get into using object-oriented programming um, in order to do some really, really cool things. So I'm going to show you a way that you can kind of take all of these things and use Python in order to run them at the same time. So if you have like a series of events that you end up using a whole lot and you don't want to code it by hand every single time, you can program it into a function. And again, this is where uh, having some Python knowledge is really going to come in handy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and define a new function and I'm going to call this uh, set up screen. And I'm basically just going to take all of this and move that over one notch so that makes it all occur inside of that function. So now let's see what happens when I run that. There, so when I hit start, nothing happens. Basically it does, it just starts the game and immediately ends it. So why didn't all of this setup stuff happen? That's because that I dropped it into a function, but I never called the function. So let's do this under that function definition, but still in my Python block, I'm going to call the setup screen function. Now when I run that, oops, oh. I shouldn't have a colon there. There we go, let's try that again. So now when I hit start, it defines that function and then calls it. Now this did exactly the same thing. Um, so again, you might be asking yourself like, what is the purpose of that? And again, you can basically run setup screen anytime you want and it will run this one, two, three, four lines of code all at the same time. Um, but let's try something even cooler with that. Let's try set up screen and let's drop it in an argument called character. Or actually, let's call that sprite. And then down here on the renpy.show Chelsea neutral, instead, we're going to call this variable that we're going to pass in called sprite. And let's go ahead and call a, oops, do a name argument as well, just so we can have this one down here. We're going to replace that with name. So now these aren't going in quotation marks anymore because these are now referring to variables, not strings. So now when we call setup screen, we can type in a sprite, and I'm gonna do a different one this time. So let's do Luna casual neutral. Let's put that in quotation marks. And then for the second argument, the name, let me make sure I get my case correctly. Okay, it's just a Luna with a lowercase l. So let's pass that in also as a string. And so now when it calls setup screen, it's going to show Luna casual neutral. And yeah, sorry, that should not have underscores and it's gonna make her say that statement. So now let's run that. There we go, so now Luna is there uh, with her name as well. And actually for name, let's make that, we've got to make that a capital L because it posts that literally. Um, and then just to show you how this is working, I can call that again, but this time we'll call it with Chelsea neutral and the name Chelsea. So now let's run that again. And when we start, we get Luna, and then it's going to immediately run that same block of code with Chelsea. So again, now you, you know, if you use that setup screen a lot, you wouldn't have to type this code every single time with the different characters. But um, all you would have to do is put in the, um, all you would have to do is put in the, the 
different names, you know, the uh, sprite that you want, the name of the character, and it runs all of the show statements and everything else automatically and you can basically make those functions as long as you want so again if you have certain setups or certain things that you end up using a lot then it would really pay to put those in a function for which you will have to use the um, um, statement equivalents which is why those are handy all right in the next video we're going to start getting into OOP object oriented programming if you want a refresher on that or if you need an introduction to OOP again check out my Python tutorials I will link to my OOP videos above I've got a couple that explain the details of object oriented programming you will need at least a basic idea of that to understand what's going on in the next couple of videos but again it's going to unlock a tremendous amount of power and possibly possibly save you a lot of time in the long run with your code um, again, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you learned something today or if you like this video. And with that, we will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.